party drive. Some people drink and drive. Some people just speed because they think that, oh, I saw them on the... No, dude, everybody can't drive fast. If you ever drove them fast, and I, I'm not condoning driving fast, even on a motorcycle or nothing, but some people can't drive slow. So they really ain't got no business driving fast. There's some instincts that come into play when you do stuff faster than you normally do. Okay, verse 11, we almost there for the glory and belief. For glory and belief. It says in verse 11, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. This was the first miracle Jesus did. And those are two reasons, possible reasons why he did it. For glory and to, to build up the belief system in his disciples. Because everybody knew that was water. Now hold on, I just watched them go back there and put water in them pots. How in the world is this governor talking about this is the best wine? You imagine all the people looking around like, I know I ain't crazy. I, I, I filled that up with water. But he did it for his glory. And from then on, everybody started looking at Jesus different. That's why when we doubt Jesus is silly, you know why? Because we know for a fact, people, a Muslim asked me one time, how do you know your Jesus is real? I said, dude, you know how I know Jesus is real? Because every day I wake up and look in the mirror, I know I'm a changed person. I would not be the person I am if Jesus wasn't real. It just would not happen. This one guy went even further and challenged my faith. He said, but if you set your mind to do something, you can do it. He said, so you don't need no God to change who you are. I said, you don't know the old Sean like I know the old Sean. There are things that I can tolerate now that I would have never been able to tolerate. And I don't make myself no gangster, no bully, no murderer, nothing like that. You don't have to be. Look at that little wimp who shot them kids with that gun. He was a little buck old five dude who got his mama's gun. So you ain't got to be no, no, no monster to do monstrous acts and to do things to be a no jerk. I know the reason why when people push me and push me and push me and break me down and break me down, I know God is real because there's a peace that, that surpasses all understanding. There's something that calms me down. And people are like, man, I don't know how you did it. Me neither. I'm like, I don't know either. As I look back, I say, I don't know how I handled that, except for God. And that's what a miracle is. That's why I know God is real. That's why I know God can still work miracles, and I believe God works miracles. Isaiah 40 and 5 says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For with the mouth of the Lord he hath spoken it. It's been God's will to reveal his glory through you since the day you was created. And the way he wants to do it is through miracles. That's where we got Miracle March from. God wants to work a miracle through you. You sitting here begging and trying to get God to do something he desires to do. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to have a marriage, a good, healthy marriage. God wants you to have prosper as your soul prosper. God wants what you want. So how do you get it? How do you get from A to B? If you know God want it for you and you want it, what's, what's, what, what's holding you up? Following instructions. And I hear the Spirit saying this. The little foxes destroy the vine. Stop ad-libbing the instructions. When you get instructions, I don't care how... Look, we all submit to somebody. The Bible says submit to those who have rule over you. Hus wives submit to husbands. Husbands submit to God. You, they submit to their bosses, they submit to the police, they submit to the judges, players submit to coaches, uh, younger players submit to older players. God is always using somebody to give you instructions. But sometimes we want to look at the person, well, he ain't got no congregation of like a thousand people, so I ain't going to listen to him. How stupid is that? You may tell me God can speak to a donkey and tell that man, like, look, there's an angel sitting there with a flaming sword that's going to cut your head off if you move. And he could have said, man, what's this donkey doing talking to me? I don't talk to jackasses. <laughs> he could have said that, and his head would have got cut off. So it just amazes me sometimes. People look me up and down like, 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 like they ain't going to listen to me. Like, like, hey, I'm just telling you what God told me to tell you. You don't have to follow the instructions. But tell you what, don't, don't expect to get your miracle. God can use anything and anybody he wants to speak a word of instruction to you for you to get your miracle. So I hear the Holy Spirit saying for some of us, and somebody may be listening or watching, that you need to follow the instructions. This is our final set of, set of, set of, set of things I'm going to share with you concerning Miracle March. A lot of people just simply will not receive their miracle because they're not, they're not willing to follow the instructions. That's it. 
And I said before, you've been following instructions your whole life. So it's a sad, sad shame that now that God wants to bless you and give you what, you, what you're supposed to have, that all of a sudden you don't want to listen no more. That don't make no sense. You've come this far. You've been waiting for a long time for God to give you your miracle. It's a sad, sad case for people to run, 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 run. Get to the finish line, but er, dude, get through. Because what you don't understand, the Bible says the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endures to the end. It is not a sprint. It is a marathon. As soon as you pass that finish line, there's another finish line. And then there's another finish line. The final finish line, obviously, is us going into heaven, where he says, enter in. But in order for us to get the things that God has for us, I believe in all my heart, mind, body, and soul as I stand here as a 250-pound man, six foot seven, that God is saying to you right now that if you want your miracle, you need to follow the instructions. And this is the last set of instructions I have for you concerning Miracle March. We've preached 3-9-2003, 3, 9, 3, 3 20. I've never preached a sermon like this before in my life where I got to connect four sermons together. This is the first time for me ever in life ever preaching a chain sermon or back to back or even I'm barely ever able to keep my notes because I usually give them to somebody but this is the first time in my life I've ever been able to preach this way that's why I believe that God sincerely wants to bless somebody with a miracle because he's been having me drive this point all month long some people I believe in my heart has to simply give up on the fact that God can bless them and that's just silly the same God that holds that sky up in the air that allows water to be wet that allow you to breathe in air instead of these gases that surround us that we can't see. If we can see the, the poisonous gases that was in the air, we shouldn't even be alive. The, very, the mere fact that you're alive is a miracle. I mean, all of us got different kind of testimonies, but we shouldn't even be alive. We want to overlook those miracles. I want a house. I want a car. I, man, look, you need to be alive to, to experience all those things. So we talked about it earlier. You need to give thanks to God and everything. Everything, everything you give God thanks for. That's the first thing you do is give God thanks because he's already working miracles out in you. And we're not going to belittle the big miracles or the, or the other miracles that God is going to do in your life. You need to believe. That is the number one thing that everybody had that received their miracle in all the stories that we shared from the beginning of March until now is they believed. And then the second thing Jesus gave them instructions. Jesus told the centurion officer, go home, your servant is healed. Jesus told Jairus, he cleared the room, everybody get out. She's not dead, she's asleep. That's what he told her. The one with the issue of what? You're healed from this very hour, you're healed. That's the way he, blind Bartimaeus, receive your sight, receive your sight. God was giving instructions. There's going to come a time in your walk, in your life, where you need to just shut up and listen to the instructions. Your flesh is going to want to kick, but guess what? Your flesh is against you. Yeah, it's your flesh. And you wouldn't think for one minute that something that's inside you, you seem to have control over, will be against you. Oh, believe me. What's it say? What the Bible say about your tongue? It's an unruly member. Member of your body. In other words, some people don't have no control over their mouth. You need to shut up and follow the instructions God is trying to give you. I've been on the street doing ministry times, and this man told me I can't go to heaven. I can't go to heaven. I'm like, why not? He's like, I just can't go. He started crying because I'm just sitting there like, look at this dude, like, I can't go. Ain't nothing you can say, preacher man, I can't go to heaven. I'm like, why not? I want to know why he can't go. Well, I was in World War II and I killed people. I was like, that's all you got? I said, was you ordered to kill those people or was you just running around, you know, murdering people? He said, well, it was, it was my orders. I had to shoot, you know. I said, dude, that's not going to keep you out of heaven. He just has simply made up in his mind what he thought was it. And that's how we do. Sometimes we will talk ourselves out of what God is saying. And blame it on the devil. The devil ain't do nothing. Listen to God. Stand on the word of God. And do what God, that's why when I grew up, I wanted to know from my elders and all my old people, what, what, what was I doing as a little kid? What did y'all tell me I would be doing? Because it's when you didn't know nothing, and when you didn't have nothing, it's when you get your instructions. That's when you find out who you're going to be really. Because, you know, they, 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 they go back to Jesus as we close. 
Harold heard that there was going to be another king to come up. And he was like, what? He was so spooked. I'm the king. What you mean there's going to be another king? Ain't no other king around here. I'm the king. He was so spooked about another king being born that he ordered that every male two years and younger get killed. Um, he, he ordered a mass murdering for the small fact. But that's how we need to be. We need to understand that in our infancy age, when we knew nothing, God was already speaking stuff over our life concerning what we was going to do. And with that word, Mary and Joseph received instructions on how she needed to raise Jesus so he could heal humanity by dying on the cross for us. And what did he tell Mary? Leave, leave here. And don't come back until this man is dead. So God, the same way, is giving you instructions. Even now, there are some of you who have just simply don't understand why you haven't received what God has for you. And I'm going to tell you this. You need to listen to the instructions. I ain't going to church, man. They, all they want is money. Man, shut up with all that stupid stuff. I'm so tired of people using them little lame excuses not to believe God ain't got nothing to do with what man do. God's business and man's business is two different businesses. Yeah, we work and we're ambassadors for Christ and we work on, on behalf of Christ. But when I used to give my tithe, it was given as unto the Lord. I didn't give it to no man. So if he rolled in the Cadillac, that's, his, that's between him and God. God will deal with him. Stop using these lame excuses not to believe God. He's the one that woke up this morning. Your bishop wasn't there talking about, hey, come on, it's time to go to church. Come on, come on, get dressed. That was the spirit of the living God, you know, compelling you to come and to go. It's like tomorrow, Easter Sunday, it's going to be people packing in the church with their little new clothes on, trying to be seen. You may be thinking you're doing it because you want to look cute, or you're doing it because it's Easter, or because of the bunny, or because of whatever. Somebody's going to be singing or whatever. You, but ultimately, you're doing it because of God. That's why I don't even fight against them pagan things, because God used those things to confound the wise. Whatever it takes to get you into the kingdom and get you blessed. Let us stand so we can pray and close. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I go by the position of an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. If you ever need us, feel free to call us at 614-723-9770 or 614-847-2057. I pray that something that God used me to say will help you understand what God wants you to have and do. And most of all, don't let nobody turn you around. Don't let nobody stop you. If God be for us, who can be against us? Ain't nothing bigger and better than God. And follow the instructions. If you heard nothing else, one thing you need to have to receive your miracles, number one, that you believe. You can't let nobody take your belief system. I believe God. I don't care what's going on in my personal life. I don't care what coaches say. I don't care what moms say. I don't care what dads say. I believe God. I've been told all my life what I'm supposed to do, and I believe that God's going to do it, and I'm going to let him do it. Stand on what God says. Everything else is going to pass away, but his word is not going to pass away. So stand on God and follow the instructions, whatever the instructions may be. Father, we thank you and praise you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you're, you're not the son of man that, that you should lie or you have need to repent, Father God. Whatever you said you was going to do, Father God, I believe right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you're going to do it. And the Bible says you're not going to tarry, which means it's not going to take a long time for you to be God. You was God before I was, and you're going to be God after I'm gone. You don't need our help. You wasn't voted in, so they can't vote you out. We stand on your word, Father God, right now, backed up by, by the Holy Spirit. We cast out every doubt right now in the name of Jesus from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Any doubt we have ever had in the ability that you've given us to do what you told us to do, we cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. We close our ear gate right now to any false and idle word, Father God, that will speak against my faith in the name of Jesus in you. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for this opportunity to observe you in Passover, Father God. I thank you for this opportunity, Father God, that the world called Easter, that you would use a simple thing to confound the wise. You would use something as simple as a silly bunny to draw people to you that they can be saved and know the real and living Jesus Christ. There was a time where I fought against those silly things, but Father God, I see in your infinite wisdom how you're going to use them to win people to Christ. No, we're not supposed to use them, but they're going to be used. I thank you, Father God, that I know these words will not fall on dead ears, Father God, and people will hide this word in their heart and they will not sin against you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that if, even if our miracles don't happen in this march, Father God, they're going to happen because we're going to stand on your word in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, we give you all the glory, Father God. Continue to teach us your ways, Father God. Not the ways of the world, Father God, but your ways. 
We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.